The purpose of this series is to reduce downtime due to annual inspections. I'm sure you realize that there are many types of inspections, including Coast Guard and ABS. These inspections are quite complex, and they vary from rig to rig and by region. In this series, we'll be referring to SEDCO's annual inspection cycle. ABS says that annual inspections of differing thoroughness must be carried out during the service life of a rig. Although not all SEDCO rigs are ABS-classed vessels, SEDCO has created a four-year annual inspection cycle for all drilling units. SEDCO personnel will perform some of the preparations for these tests when it's convenient. For example, while heading for sheltered waters. Sheltered waters are needed for many of the test methods. So, welcome to the wonderful world of non-destructive testing, or as we say, NDT. NDT is used extensively during the construction of a rig and, to a lesser degree, during annual inspections. There are three different types of annual inspections during the four-year cycle. The first and third years, a Type 1 inspection is carried out. This consists of an extensive visual examination, or VE, and some NDT of structural members, joints, and special components. A report is filed on forms like this one. There's a form for each of the areas to be inspected. This same form is used during the entire four-year cycle. This makes it easy to uncover reoccurring problems. A separate report is also filed if any structural damage occurred since the last inspection. The second year, a Type II inspection is conducted. This consists of some visual inspection and extensive MPI, UT, or EMD testing. Don't worry, I'll tell you what they are in a minute or so. Anyway, MPI, or EMD, is conducted at all levels at critical connections where high stress and fatigue could cause problems. The fourth year, a Type 4 inspection is carried out. I didn't forget about year three. Remember that a Type 1 inspection is carried out that year. A Type 4 is the most comprehensive inspection of the cycle. The same methods of testing are used, but this time on many more areas of the rig. Since most NDT techniques are conducted around welds, let's take a look at their components. This is a full penetration butt weld. It has a penetration or root bead, a throat, two faces, four toes, and a heat affected zone. Most defects occur at the toe. In the heat affected zone, heat from the welding process had modified the base metal. Full penetration butt welds sometimes require beveling of the two pieces. This makes numerous weld passes necessary so that the weld metal replaces the metal which was taken away during the beveling process. This is a partial penetration weld. It has only two toes and one face. There are very few of these on a rig and there are none in critical areas. So far I've only shown you butt welds. There are some others. These are the most common. This is called a fillet weld. And this is a double fillet weld. There are also combination welds like this butt fillet weld. Now let's take a look at some of the defects that are likely to appear. Toe, transverse, and shrinkage cracks, along with porosity, are surface breaking defects. Toe cracks begin along the toe and often grow into the weld metal from there. Shrinkage cracks appear in the face of the weld and run in the direction of the weld. The transverse crack runs perpendicular to the weld. Sometimes they appear only in the weld metal, but they can also extend into the base metal. Porosity is the result of some gas that was trapped in the metal during the welding process. These are all surface breaking defects, but they can also extend to become interior defects. Underbead cracking, slag inclusion, and all defects found below the surface are known as interior defects. Underbead cracks occur in the heat affected zone. 
They're usually fairly small, but sometimes they can join together to form one long crack. Slag inclusions are due to bad welding techniques. They're pieces of slag or solid metal which were left and trapped during the welding process. Well, now that you know something about the defects, let's talk about the NDT techniques that locate them. Let's start with the NDT techniques which will locate surface breaking defects. There are several, but these are the most common. Visual examination, or VE. Liquid or dye penetrant, or LP or DP. Magnetic particle inspection, or MPI or MT. Electromagnetic detection, or EMD. The visual examination method, just as the name implies, is a visual examination of a material or area. This is probably the most time-consuming and difficult of all of the methods, if done properly. The inspector looks for any surface misalignment, cracked paint, discontinuous scale, any evidence of fluid leakage, as well as some other telltale signs of possible defects. Sometimes he'll even use a magnifying glass. Any suspected defect is marked and then inspected again with a more discriminating NDT method. The liquid or dye penetrant is used to find surface defects only. In most cases, this is the only method which is conducted by rig hands and only if they have experience with it. Prior to the test, the surface needs to be cleaned to the bare metal. Water blasters, sand blasters, and shot blasters are often needed. We'll go into specific cleaning details in the preparation tape. Here are the necessary materials. Many, many clean rags. We recommend chem wipes. These can be ordered with the cleaning solvent. A dye penetrant. And the developer. When the area has been cleaned to the bare metal, it needs to be cleaned even more with a cleaning solvent. After the area has had time to dry, the surface is thoroughly coated with the dye penetrant. About 10 minutes later, all of the penetrant is removed. This is the most critical step of the method. The best way to do this is by using the cleaning solvent and some chem wipes. The solvent evaporates quickly, so spray the solvent directly into the rags. You'll know when the area is cleaned enough when a fresh rag is still clean after being run across the surface. If a defect exists, the penetrant will be trapped in the defect even after this cleaning. Now it's time for the final spray. This one is the developer. It's a fine white powder that draws the remaining penetrant out of a potential defect by capillary action. A dark color is produced, in this case red, along any defect. Assuming the area has been cleaned properly, the red color, or bleeding as they call it, indicates that there is a defect in the area. The defect may not be detrimental to the weld, however. Always have a qualified person check any defect you find. LP is most suited for machine surfaces that are quite smooth, like these ramrods. This diagram makes it easier to see what's happening during this process. When the penetrant is applied, it seeps into even the smallest defect. Even after a thorough cleaning, the penetrant is still trapped in the metal. When the developer is added, it pulls the penetrant out of the defect, making the defect visible. Magnetic particle inspection, or MPI, is the most widely used NDT method for annual inspection. Like some other methods, the area to be tested must be cleaned down to the bare metal. Some of the materials needed are an electric yoke or a permanent magnet, either a wet magnetic ink, a dry magnetic powder, or an ultraviolet ink. The dry powder MPI method is not used often during annual inspections of SEDCO rigs, but we're going to show you this method anyway. The procedure is quite similar to the wet MPI method, which is used more frequently, but it's easier for the camera to see the results of the dry method. Again, the surface must be cleaned to the bare metal by sandblasting, needle gun, or other methods. When conducting this test by the book, the magnet is first placed on the weld, like this. The magnetic powder is then sprayed to the area. The magnet is then turned 90 degrees so that the weld area is crossed, like so. 
The defects show up quite easily, as you can see. The wet method is the most popular MPI technique because the dry powder is difficult to work with in rough weather. Strong winds blow the powder around. And it is more sensitive than the dry method. I already said that MPI is one of the most widely used methods for locating surface breaking defects. Here's why. It's relatively inexpensive, it's relatively fast, and it produces instant results. And like everything else in the world, it has a couple of disadvantages. Testing is limited to ferrous metals. It detects only surface defects. And a lot of cleaning is needed prior to the test. Now that that's behind us, let's move on to the EMD method, or electromagnetic detection. This method has been used on SEDCO rigs since 1983. Like the MPI or the LP method, EMD is used to detect and locate surface breaking defects in welds and parent materials. It takes two people to do this test, one at the control unit and another at the probe. A standard oscilloscope with an EMD module built in produces the electromagnetic signals which are used for the test. The signal is carried through three to four hundred feet of umbilical cable until it reaches the probe. There are several different probes for various conditions, including underwater. You'll see EMD operators wearing headsets. They need these to communicate and also to hear the alarm that sounds when the probe passes over a potential defect. During the test, the probe is moved along the surface. When the alarm sounds, the area is marked and will be inspected later using another method to determine how serious the defect is. The beauty of this method is the test area is required to be cleaned down to good sound paint. Further cleaning is needed only when there's a heavy buildup of corrosion in the area. Corrosion may give false signals to the operator and must be removed. This is usually done with shot blasters or sand blasters. When there's no corrosion in the area, a lot of cleaning time has been saved. The next NDT method is called ultrasonics, or UT. This method is seldom used as a primary NDT method during annual inspections. It is often used for evaluating defects found by other NDT methods and to determine plate thickness. UT requires cleaning down to bare metal and the surface must be smooth. Any weld spatter or arc strikes from the welding process must be removed. UT, as the name implies, involves generating high-frequency sound waves, much higher than the ear can hear. The procedure is pretty complex, and only highly trained personnel are qualified to perform it. In a nutshell, it goes like this. A clear liquid is applied to the surface. This acts as a couplet between the metal and this thing, which is a transducer. Many different fluids can be used as a couplet, including diluted dish soap. The clear portion of the transducer is called the wedge or shoe. It gives the transducer the different angles of incidence that are needed to find certain defects. This is another oscilloscope. This one reads the audio signal sent into the material being tested by the transducer. The signal then bounces off the back side of the material and is received by the transducer. Sometimes two transducers are used, one to send the signal, the other to receive it. This is called the pitch and catch method. The signal is then read by the oscilloscope. Sometimes the screen can look a bit garbled, but an experienced operator can tell quite a bit about the interior of a sample by correctly interpreting the garble. The main advantage of ultrasonics is that it can detect both surface and internal defects. UT can also be used on both ferrous and non-ferrous materials. Now we've covered all the non-destructive testing, or NDT techniques, used on SEDCO rigs during annual inspections. Remember that certain methods only detect surface breaking defects. They are visual examinations, dye penetrant, magnetic particle inspection, electromagnetic detection. They all require cleaning to the bare metal with the exception of EMD and visual examinations. The only interior defect test that is used in our rigs is ultrasonics. It can be used for both surface and interior defects, and it can be used on ferrous and non-ferrous metals. The area must be cleaned to bare metal prior to the test. That about wraps up part one of the annual inspection series. 
Part 2 will cover the cleaning procedures you'll need to be aware of for each NDT method.